Welcome to a look at the top 10 real-time strategy games coming up in 2017 and 2018. If you like your blood spatters up close and personal, then you'll definitely want to check out this first game. At number 10, Ancestors. Ancestors is a large-scale, squad-based RTS. Set in the Dark Ages, you can choose from four available nations, Vikings, Anglo-Saxons, Germans and Slavs. And if you're wondering where the half-naked berserkers are, or why there isn't a horned helmet in sight, it's because Ancestors is going for a high degree of historical accuracy, which is reflected in not just the look of the troops and the environment, but also in the single-player campaign, which features actual events from medieval history. Now, if you're anything like me, you won't set a lot of store in cinematic trailers. Yeah, they're great to watch, they look beautiful, but we want to see what the, the actual game looks like. But judging by the in-game screenshots that have been released so far, which we'll take a look at later, this cinematic trailer might not actually be too far off the mark. One of the big selling points of the game is the cinematic battle camera, which the developers claim allows you to experience medieval bloodshed like never before. And if this trailer is anything to go by, they're not kidding. It's bloody, it's brutal, and I think it's totally awesome. Okay, that's going to leave a mark. The developers claim that the game has a strong emphasis on tactical actions, both in the single player mode and also in multiplayer mode. You'll have to carefully manage your resources and have a good grasp of the large-scale strategy and the small-scale tactics if you're going to be successful. And while this guy gasps his last breath, let's take a look at those in-game screenshots that I promised you. Uh, castle sieges, Viking log boats, it looks gorgeous. These are all available in 360 degrees on the developer's website. I would really suggest you go and take a look and I think this game's worth adding to your watch list. We still need to know and see a lot more about the game, but it's definitely one to watch. At number 9, it's the fourth instalment in the ever-popular Sudden Strike series. Sudden Strike 4 boasts three extensive campaigns which are set amongst the battlefields of World War II and you can command the British, American, German or Soviet troops. You have over a hundred different units to choose from. Uh, great units like the, the German Heinkel bomber, the, uh, the Russian T-34 tank, the British Hawker Typhoon, which is one of my favourites, and the infamous German Tiger tank. There's also an optional pause and play function. And this instalment seems to generally encourage a more considered and thoughtful playstyle. And this time around, it's got bigger battlefields, more units, better graphics, and something completely new to the series, legendary commanders. You can now choose from one of nine individual commanders, such as uh, George Patton or Montgomery, uh, and each will allow for different approaches to combat and have unique abilities. And while Sudden Strike doesn't have the photorealism and the huge variety of units that you'd find in something like Steel Division, it's still a very solid, fun World War II RTS, and it's well worth checking out. Whether you're a fan of the TV series or not, Battlestar Galactica Deadlock is sure to titillate your RTS taste buds. And we'll check out some gameplay after this short cinematic trailer. There are those who believe our fight is unjust. That we deserve no redemption and choose this path of violence for ourselves. There are those who believe the conspiracies and the lies allowed to fester in the colonies. But one truth hangs above us all. The Cylons have rebelled. And I believe 
there is no end to their war. Battlestar Galactica Deadlock is set during the first Cylon War and promises epic 3D battles as you fight to save the 12 colonies from the Cylon threat. You'll have access to the full armada of the 12 colonies, from Mark I Vipers and Raptor Scout ships to the unbelievably huge Jupiter-class Battlestars. The game's actually a hybrid strategy game with turns planned out in advance and then the action playing out in real time. One of the things that really strikes me about this game is how easy it is to move your ships in 3D space. I think they've done a great job with the interface. The game offers both single player and multiplayer options and features uh, an original story which is set during the first Cylon War. Wow, so he's definitely going for, uh, for a nice shot here with the missiles and we can actually see the missiles firing. Now there is a difference I guess guys. Oh, absolute destruction there. And I love it, wow. I'm already seeing some debris from your yes. previous ship still sort of floating as much time. damage as we can here to this thing. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of firepower. Come on, let's get a kill. Nah. Maybe we'll wait one more turn to finally kill this thing. So David is getting some unbelievable shots there at the front. As, you, as we mentioned before, he's trying to turn, but he's finished, that's it. Look at that explosion. What do you get if you take a Victorian steampunk theme, throw in a big dollop of colony management, add some genuinely engaging gameplay, render the whole thing in stunning 4K graphics, And finally, load it up with more zombies than you can possibly imagine. You get they are billions. And this isn't some mindless tower defense game. This has got colony management, it's got resource gathering, you've got to build all kinds of buildings, you can upgrade them all. And the zombies are intelligent, they smell, they listen. If you make a noise, they'll come to it. If you kill some of them to access a resource deposit, a hundred of them will come to investigate. But I don't have to tell you about all that. Just look at it! Five years after a devastating climatic disaster, the world we once knew has ended. The ocean's surface has risen. The mainlands are massively overpopulated and natural resources have run short. Now the world's last natural deposits lie 3,000 feet below the ocean's surface. Governmental forces, private armies, and corporations are fighting for those last raw materials. An underwater resource war has broken out. The future of mankind lies in the depths of the ocean. Welcome on board, Commander. It has come to my attention you are really ripping through the ranks. But as one of the best graduates of the Academy, I must say, I am not surprised. As you may know, the situation is critical. The waters in our area of operation have become more and more hostile over the years. I don't blame the poor souls seeking for fortune. They have no other place to be. But they aggressively interfere with our operations. While open conflict is not our preferred option, we always have to be prepared for possible attacks. The mission I am transferring to you 
is crucial for our survival here on the Ark. Assemble a task force for this operation. Submerge into the depths of the ocean and harvest the last resources before others do. But be warned, in the depths of the ocean there is an even more valuable resource, your oxygen. You and your team's life depends on it, so keep an eye on your oxygen gauge at all times. If you run low, extract oxygen from the vicious sea creatures, or steal it from our competitors. Don't hold back, it's a merciless world out there, and they won't hesitate to do the same. Once you and your squad have collected raw materials in the sectors, return to your designated operation base to repair your men's ships and call for reinforcements. You will need every pilot you can get. And don't underestimate the hazards of the ocean, Commander. While other corporations and contractors are trying to interfere with our operation, the depths are hosting dangers unlike anything you have ever seen before. The men under your command are your hands, your ears and your eyes in the field. On their own, their vessels are weak and vulnerable, but as a team, and with you acting as their brain, they make a very powerful squad. Every pilot is a specialist with unique abilities. They bring their personal strengths and weaknesses, but only if used right and combined with each other, they can turn the tide of every battle. Know their limits, play them right and you'll have a powerful force at your disposal. So what are you waiting for? We are counting on you, Commander. Can you stand the pressure? The first time I started watching this trailer, I was thinking, do we really need a remastered version of a 20-year-old game? It's been completely remastered, it's been rendered in 4K, They've completely upgraded all of the art assets, uh, a complete new narration throughout, new sound effects. It's got single and multiplayer modes. There's also a classic mode. But whichever way you look at it, it's still a 20 year old game. And it wasn't until about halfway through the video when they showed the first shots of the actual gameplay that I suddenly realized I had a big smile on my face. And I was remembering just what a great game Age of Empires really was. I played hours and hours of this game. And just look at it. And a few seconds later, I realized I was thinking, I wouldn't mind playing that again. Now, there can't be too many of you out there who haven't played at least one game from the franchise. And I'm sure you've all got the same fond memories. So there it is, Age of Empires, the definitive edition. I have a sneaking suspicion that might be in my Christmas stocking. At number four, it's Spellforce 3. Now let me tell you, this game almost didn't make this top 10 because when I first watched this video, I almost fell asleep. This is one of the most... Okay, it kind of looks cool, but the music is really kind of depressing and the video is a total snooze fest. <laughs> Let's face it. Yeah, it's kind of okay to look at, but I'm getting bored and now I'm losing the will to live. So um, we're not going to watch the rest of this trailer. And instead, we're going to watch this trailer, which is uh, a teaser trailer for PvP. And the only reason that I kind of persevered with this game was that I happened to speak to a, a friend of mine who played this at a, at a games convention and said it was really good and he really enjoyed playing it. So um, I went kind of back and checked it out. Now this is more like it. There's some people running around. Come on, blow something up. There we go. That's more like it. This is already like a million times better. This is what we want. We want to see the game. We want to see stuff blowing up. Okay, it's very short, but um, yeah, uh, a big, big memo to uh, THQ Nordic, the publishers, don't make boring videos. If you want more details about this game, go check out the website.
news came of a mysterious land lying beyond the Iron Hail, prompting the clan elders to send their bravest warriors. They sailed through fog and storms, navigating the treacherous Iron Sea, until they finally reached the shores of Northgard. It's pretty easy to sum up Northgard. Northgard takes the Settlers series into the next generation. I was lucky enough to get an early copy of Northgard and I played it and I was uh, enjoying it and I was getting ready to make a Let's Play series of it and then I got distracted by Oxygen Not Included which has kind of become my obsession and so I, I never carried on playing it and I'm kind of looking at this trailer and kind of regretting that because this is a really good game. It's got a nice balance of complexity versus depth. It has a few novel mechanics, the way that you have to expand territory and control resources. Generally, this is a good solid RTS game that I would have no problems recommending. At number two, it's Total War Warhammer 2. And there really isn't too much to say about this because if you've seen or played the first instalment, this is going to be exactly the same. It's just all new content. It's a completely new campaign and the two races at the start are going to be the High Elves, they're my favourite, and the Lizard Men. And for those of us, including me, who sometimes complain about the cost of the DLCs, the amount of the DLCs, the fact that they're releasing a completely new game at full price only a year after the first one, you know what? I think we all need to shut up, get our wallets out, because let's face it, it's awesome, we're going to buy it anyway. Oh, and I almost forgot, this trailer absolutely rocks. When I heard the first few notes of the music in this next trailer, something that I hadn't heard for at least 10 years, the hairs on my arms literally stood on end. The undisputed king of the real-time strategy genre is back. This is the game that not only redefined real-time strategy, it even redefined our language. Before StarCraft, we rushed. After StarCraft, we zerged. We sat around at school and work discussing the merits of seven pooling versus eight pooling. 20 years ago, it took over our lives. And I think it's gonna do it again.
That's it for my top 10 real-time strategy games. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll catch you for the next one. Peace out. <laughs>